Good morning all. Today I'm going to make some uh, decoys, some decoy MOSFET drivers. Uh, so I need some opto isolators because that's the uh, basic essence of the decoy. I need some LEDs, angled headers here. I'm also going to add these uh, turned pin sockets in and of course I need some Veriboard to put all the bits on. So decoy is the dual complementary opto isolator MOSFET driver. So I'll draw a little circuit of that. So as the name would imply, there are two opto isolators. So let's draw them there and there. Inside these opto isolators, of course, we have opto transistors. They're NPN. Let's draw those. And the emitter of the top transistor is connected to the collector of the bottom transistor and then we have access to the emitter and collector uh, on the outside. Now also of course in these opto isolators you have uh, LEDs so let's draw those in. That's the top LED, that's the bottom LED. Uh, those are connected together but there are also two external LEDs. So there's one connected there and there's one connected here. So on the input side, we put 5 volts, 5 volts there, and 0 volts down here. Now you'd think that that would uh, light all the LEDs up. There are no series resistors, but in fact it doesn't because the combined forward voltage of these four LEDs, these two are infrared because they're the LEDs that are inside these opto isolators. These two, uh, I'm going to do yellow today, but you could do red or green or not blue because then the forward voltage is too high. But uh, with a yellow, an infrared, an infrared, and a yellow, these won't light up because uh, there's not enough voltage here between 5 volts and 0 volts to overcome the forward voltages of these four LEDs. So these are all off. So the trick with this is to connect uh, this middle point here to a digital output of uh, a microcontroller, for example. And uh, when it goes high, then you've got uh, 5 volts here, and that goes through the resistor and through two diodes to ground, so the bottom two LEDs turn on. When this goes uh, low, then we've got a path from this 5 volts up here through these two diodes and the resistor to uh, the low output of the microcontroller, so these LEDs turn on. So this is decoy, D-C-O-I, and it's dual com Complementary opto isolator. So I'm going to need some uh, 150 ohm resistors. I've got some little 8 watt ones here. Uh, I think there's 150s, 220s, 330s, 470s in here. So I'll just weed out some 150s and that'll be for this resistor there. So how is this a MOSFET driver? Well, if we connect uh, the MOSFET to that point there. Um, now I'll put the gate of the MOSFET on there and the source of the MOSFET connected to here. Now this is uh, 0 volts but it's a different 0 volts to this 0 volts because we've got complete galvanic isolation between the microcontroller circuitry on the input side and the MOSFET circuitry on the output side and that's very important for high side driving, driving the high side MOSFETs uh, in my, where's my diagram? Yes, here it is. Driving the high side MOSFETs, these two up here, in my uh, Buck Boost Bidirectional Muppet 2 project. These uh, MOSFETs are normally difficult to drive because source is a voltage that's got a, sort of all over the place. Uh, so it's very difficult to ground reference to source and gate. But uh, we can do it here, source and gate on the output side of the decoy. We just need a power supply. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use 9 volts and I'm just going to use a 9 volt battery. So I'm going to start by uh, soldering a couple of these uh, opto isolators onto a little strip of Veriboard, which I've just cut uh, really badly. So these are PC817 optos. They're very cheap. You can get them on eBay for a few pence each, I think. Uh, so they'll do. Let's solder those in. And of course, the other thing I need to do on the bottom of the board is drill all these tracks to create this isolation between uh, the input side and the output side. So let's warm up the uh, soldering iron, stick a bit of water 
in the sponge there. Now, I have got this right, haven't I? Uh, the LED sort of points downwards, that's there. There's the transistor. Oh, you can't see that very well, but that's NPN with the emitter pointing downwards. So, yeah, that all looks right. That's pin one, so I'll put the dot there. Uh, so, let's just check that I've got these the right way around. Yeah, so the dot is in the upper left corner. So, that's good. Let's solder those in. I think the iron's warm. Right, can you see? Yep. Yeah. So let's just solder those for input side connections. And the, mm, might turn that around actually, just because of the way these legs are splayed out a little bit. Solder the four output side connections. Now, of course, I'm going to have to break the tracks running between input and output side. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll do that with this, which is a little um, drill bit that has a sort of thumb grip on it. This came with a uh, set of printer cartridges, those ones where you can refill them. You drill a hole in the printer cartridge and squirt ink in with a syringe, but it works pretty well for uh, cutting the tracks on Veriboard. I never found the proper, is it called a Qmax cutter, I think it is? I never found that one actually worked. So this works pretty well. I have to get rid of all this detritus. Right, so that is the isolation restored. Let's get in closer on that. Right, so yeah, the side with the two uh, dots, the two pin ones, is that left-hand side. And that's now restored the isolation between uh, left-hand side and output side. Oh, now the other thing is I want to connect the uh, collector and emitter together there in the middle and also the anode and cathode on this side together in the middle. So I'll just blob solder on to do that. Uh, yeah, that's these connections here between uh, cathode and anode in the middle here where the resistor is going to go. And also the connection here between uh, emitter and collector on the uh, opto transistors there. So I'll just uh, fill that with solder to stick those together. Fill that with solder to stick those together. Okay, that's done. So now I need these two external LEDs, which I'll do as uh, yellow, yellow and yellow. Uh, these ones, of course, are infrared. They're the ones that are IR. They're the ones that are built into the uh, two opto isolators. So let's solder these on and then I'll get that resistor on. So I've got to get these the right way around. Um, that'll be flat side, which is cathode. Uh, going into pin one. So this is uh, pin one here on these two optos. Does that tie up with that? Uh, yeah, that does. That's all good. So that one goes in like that. Uh, the other one, of course, will go in the other way round. So the flat side will need to go to the left. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, that looks all right. And then I've got to actually cut between the legs of the tracks between the legs of these optos. Actually, it might be easier to do that now. Otherwise, if I get solder bridged uh, between the two legs, it's going to be very difficult to cut through it. Right, so I've made little cuts. I've just carved copper out so I can span the LED across those gaps and the solder shouldn't flow, uh, shorting the LEDs out. Now, I also have to think of a way of doing uh, the resistor. Actually, I really, I should take cuts all the way down so that I can do the resistor as well. So let's solder all of this lot up. So I can get in without causing solder bridges. Let's do that one and this one on this end. That one there. Right, and I'll cut the legs and do the middle ones afterwards. Right, now I want a means of connecting uh, the input side of the decoy, the LEDs to uh, my Arduino, so I want to snap off uh, four of these and uh, put that angled header on the end there. Right, so what I want to do now is just uh, make sure this works. Um, nice thing about decoy is it has these two yellow, on, in this case, LEDs, so uh, of course it's very visible. You can see that the two LEDs are flashing on and off alternately, so I'm just going to connect this to uh, the Arduino. Now the thing about this Arduino is it goes signal uh, 5 volts ground 
and the input to this isn't that. Um, it's five volts will be up on the top there, ground at the bottom, and signal can be on either of those two middle pins. I've actually uh, bridged them across with solder. So I've just got to put a little twist in this uh, cable, but I'll connect that up and just put a blink sketch in and we'll just make sure that those flash. Right, there we are. Uh, now, signal, my middle pin, uh, red, it can be on either of these two middle pins. So red goes to uh, signal, put it on D13 because I'm going to use the standard blink sketch. Uh, positive will be that orange one that goes to uh, the sort of pin one top side. It goes to the, the anode of the LED, which is on this pin one side. And then the uh, cathode of this bottom LED goes back to ground through that brown wire that goes to ground. Yes, yeah, so that should all be good. I'll load blink. We'll see if that works. Right, so blink is running. Actually, let me lower the blinds a bit so these LEDs are a bit easier to see. Um, now you can see that there's a sort of inherent inversion here in the decoy uh, front end. This is the D13 LED, and you can see that when it comes on, that blue LED on, it's actually the bottom LED on the decoy that comes on. So it's uh, this pair of LEDs lights. And that makes sense, of course, because uh, when D13 output goes high, so high on this 150 ohm resistor, it sources current down through these two LEDs and uh, back to zero volts. So a high on the output of the microcontroller turns the bottom pair of LEDs on. A low on the output of the microcontroller um, actually sinks current from five volts up here, down through the top two LEDs, through the resistor and uh, back through the microcontroller and down to ground internally in the microcontroller. So a low on D13 output when this blue LED is off turns this top uh, LED on. And uh, that inherent inversion could actually be quite handy.